Hey guys, so today I just wanna to come to you and share, you know, what are the dream firms doing that you are not? And let's kind of even take a step back and kind of define what is a dream firm because everyone's dream is slightly different. For some people, they, their dream, either accounting firm or bookkeeping firm, is, you know, doing a million dollars a year, having maybe, you know, three, four, five, X amount of employees, and they're going and scaling. For some people, it's more of they want to do, you know, 100,000, 200,000 a year. They want to be a solopreneur. They just want to be able to basically replace the income they were making at their, you know, past job. And they want to have more freedom, more time to relax, more time to spend with their family, and just being more self sufficient and kind of, you know, exiting the matrix, exiting the rat race. Um, for me, I'm kind of in the middle. I like being able to be around, you know, be between about 300 and 350 a year with my accounting firm. And I don't really want to go to a seven-figure one because for, for me, it's just not really what I want to do. But on the other hand, I, I don't want to be more at that like, you know, 100 grand a year kind of mark. I like being right in the middle because what that also allows me to do is it gives me credibility to be able to make videos like this and really help mentor and coach people on how to grow theirs. Now, I like that business more because it's just a little bit more fun and rewarding to be able to develop such deep relationships with my students. And also, my passion is marketing and sales, okay? Those are the one things that I read about two and a half hours every single evening of marketing and sales books. That's the one thing I want to master and I want to become really good at. Um, part of the reason why is because like when I was getting started, I was so bad when it came to sales and marketing. It felt like you know I I spent like three months building my um, website and I had like gotten all my services. I had, I had made all my brochures. I, I don't have a brochure um, in this room or accessible, but if I did, I, I would show you. Um, one of my brochures but it took so long we had spent so much time when I finally hit publish on it nothing came like I got no viewers I got no sales I got nothing and I was so deflated because I was like oh did no one like my website like what, what did I do wrong <laughs> so then I'd be like instead I would take like my flyers and I would go to like networking events and I would be trying to you know talk to the business owners they'd be like maybe five to ten of them inside of the room they would kind of be okay, but then they would be like, eh, I don't really want that. You know, I don't really know why I need that. And I was so bad at sales, I didn't know how to like boost that excitement that they had. I didn't know how to really get my point across. I didn't know how to educate them um, without really boring them about, you know, why they needed this service and then why this service is going to help them out. So I really had to develop that skill. And, you know, the first um, year I spent about $35,600 and like, you know, some change on, on, coaching, mentorship, sales tapes, guru retreats, just anything to get my hands on to, to make sure that I could grow my business because I, I really needed to, um, you know, make some money. And it's just how it was. I just needed to make some money. So I decided to invest some money first, um, keep moving, keep learning, keep trying. And then I just kept, you know, making more and more progress inside of my business. And that's generally what I encourage other people to do. Now, if you want some help going and growing your business, I don't know if I said this already, I think I went on a tangent before, but if you want some help growing your, your accounting or your bookkeeping business, and you want to avoid all the mistakes that I made over the past seven years of running Minds, go ahead and click on the link below to go and book a call with me to see if I can help you um, grow your business. If not, it's okay. These videos are great. I have a lot of different um, playlists inside of this channel to be able to help you walk you through step by step how to start growing your business so that you know not only can you get some results but it's with the expectation that as you get results you're going to go and invest, reinvest some of that money to join my program it's just how it is man I give so much stuff away for free because the stuff that I you know don't share with you guys is it's is pretty killer now let's kind of dive into this thing okay so number one what are they doing that you're not number one thing is they put themselves out there probably a million times more than what the person who is struggling, you know, doesn't. So for example, not only is it like making posts, right? It's also going in, in Messenger and having, you know, hundreds of thousands of conversations active at one time. It is um, really going and just getting visible. It's, it's be, not being afraid to, you know, go to church and then sell to the people inside of it, you know, going to, um, you know, and anywhere they go, they're just telling everybody about their business. They're just talking, they're just talking, they're just talking. Hey, man, I do this. Hey, man, I do this. Hey, you know, do you own a business? Hey, I do this. Hey, who do you know needs this? Hey. And the, the, the first time that I really, really saw this and I really understood, like, why why these people were, seeing, were finding so much success so fast was one of my students um, named Jay. 
And I looked at his LinkedIn account one time, and it was like every two weeks, this guy would be like, hey, do you need an account? Hey, do you need some help? Hey, why are you ignoring me? Hey, is everything okay? Hey, did I overstep? Hey, it was just like every two weeks. And I was like, oh my gosh, man, this thing is crazy. I was like, but that's what it takes to win. Okay, it's, you, you don't have any feelings. You don't care if people don't like you. You don't care if people get irritated with you. You don't care. It's almost like this kind of apathy towards people's um, feelings towards you. And it's more about like, you know that you need or you want more money. And you know that you have to go and make as many contacts with people as possible in order for you to be able to do that. Now, that's the number one trait that I see, okay? Like, like after I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, man. I am not attacking hard enough. Because I would be, you know, the kind of person where, you know, I'd be, I'd be going and I'd be like maybe messaging somebody once every two months, maybe once every six months, kind of following up and checking in. But when I saw that, I was like, oh. Because it was working. It was like every two weeks he just reached out to the same exact people. And then eventually he'd be like, okay, I'm ready, man. Sorry for ignoring you. I just haven't been on this platform very frequently. Oh, hey, thanks for following up with me, man. I've been, I've been meaning to respond. I just always get distracted whenever I, whenever I think about, you know, talking to you. So I'm, I apologize for the delay. Thank you so much for being patient with me. Thank you so much for following up with me. Okay. The, the story and, and the point with that is the right people are actually thankful that you, um, that you follow up with them. They're thankful that you didn't give up on them. I cannot tell you how many times, even for myself, right, for I have like virtual assistants and I have just different assistants because I'm a very kind of like sporadic kind of person. I'm very impulsive and I'm always like thinking and moving a million different directions. So I have one VA where it's like if I don't do something or if we talked about something and I either didn't do it or I forgot about it, she literally just reminds me, hey, did you do this? Hey, did you do this? Hey, did you get this thing done? Hey, why am I not saying this? Hey, and I'm like, oh my gosh. I am so thankful that that person is there and that becomes an invaluable person to my organization because again, I'm running a million different directions, I'm all over the place and it helps to be able to have someone who can hone you in and focus you in. Now as an accountant, as a bookkeeper, that's part of our job is to make sure that we can keep track of the details while the business owner is just running around with like a chicken without its head cut off. Especially if you're working with someone who's making like seven to eight figures, like they're, they're being pulled in so many different directions. So if you can be that point of stability, you're gonna be able to show trust, familiarity, and they're going to see like, oh wow, so if this person is, is checking up on me like this and I'm not even paying them, imagine how much more they're gonna be doing when I'm actually working with them and actually paying them. And it actually kind of does like this micro incentivization for them to want to work with you because they're actually incentivized. It's like, oh, she's following up with me like once a month. She might be able to follow up with me even more if like if like I actually like you know pay her, and then they just start paying you and they feel really good about it and they start moving forward. Now the second thing is, the people who own dream firms, right? The ones that are that are growing at the rate that they want, the ones that are growing and, and reaching their goals, they are not afraid to get uncomfortable. Okay, so this comes in investing in themselves, right? So they'll invest themselves even though the price is more than what they're planning. They will do things and put themselves out there in a different way. Um, another thing is they are not afraid to go and ruffle up some feathers. For example, like like my student, uh, Melissa, um, Melissa H. And when she was getting started, she had like, I think it was like 20 or 30 clients and they were paying her anywhere from like 150 a month to 150 a quarter. Right? And she had so many clients like that. And it was like the first thing we had to do was like, hey, we got to have some tough conversations, man. You ain't going to be able to run a business like that. Like, you're not going to make any money if you have dirty clients because all these clients, it wasn't that they were so small that they didn't take a lot of time. A lot of them just like, they had a lot of work, but they, she didn't know how to price it right when she first got started. And it just kept snowballing, snowballing, snowballing. Because then they would go and tell their friends of how cheap she was. Then she'd just be getting these low valued referrals. So the first thing we had to do is you had to say like, hey, let's write down a list of all of your clients um, from least to greatest. And we gotta go and have these conversations. <laughs> hey, we gotta we gotta up these prices, man. We gotta up these prices. If you, if, you, if you can't do that, you can't afford it, you don't value the service enough, I have someone um, that I can refer you to, but you know, as of right now, like, like this is what it has to be. And I think it was like, it was like 90%, I think, I think it was like 25 said yes, only one said no. 
But even though it was so easy for her to do that, it took like probably about two weeks of us talking about it before she got the confidence to do that because she was like, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I was so scared about Price. I didn't want to upset them. I didn't want to feel like, you know, I was betraying them because they got started with me when I first got started. I was like, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Do it anyway. <laughs> They will be okay if they really value, if they really like you, if you've been doing the service um, that you know they really value, they're going to go with the price increase. And then she even not only increased those clients, but she also was able to start raising her front end prices. So for all of her new clients that she got, we, I gave her my pricing calculator so she knew exactly what to charge. And it was just like, hey, she got, she got this one client and the person we, we kind of did a weird thing for him because he needed like a specific type of client. It was like a forensic accounting type client where there was some money kind of missing and she had to go and like clean up the books first in order to find it. So we said, was, hey, go charge $150 an hour. <laughs> and in one, in one week, she got about $6,000 from doing one week, um, one week worth of, um, just stuff. And it, it was, it was amazing. Right. And the person still needs, I think it's about person needed about one month was what she was predicting it was going to be taking and it, it was just crazy man and it's all because like she learned to get uncomfortable she learned to talk about price she learned to talk about money she learned to talk about you know what was really needed and, like having those hard conversations and that's when we're able to go and just like go from you know making you know five five grand a month with 30 clients to <laughs> being able to leave your job because you actually have some real money now right i mean I don't want to kind of talk about her business, but I mean, I think she was at like eleven or twelve thousand dollars a month off of two tweaks. So it's not like it takes that much that much difference, but it can be the difference between you not being able to leave your job because it's not quite paying enough, or you being able to like double your income, all from a couple key decisions and being uncomfortable in the right place at the right time that allow you to be able to go and do this. And that's basically what the dream firms are doing that you're not, okay? It's putting themselves out there a million times more than what you are, and two, making sure they're uncomfortable. If they see uncomfortability, they don't fear it. They push through instead, and they push through past whatever their old limits are, and they get to a new place that most people can only dream of. And that's basically it, guys. So if you want some help going and growing your business, maybe you're an accountant or you're a bookkeeper or you're interested in getting into the field and you want to start your own business, go ahead and click the link below to book a call with me to see exactly how I can help, what it entails, and what it looks like for us to work together um, to go and achieve your goals together. If that's you, I will see you on the call. Have a great rest of your day. Take it easy. Talk to you soon.